I set out to write the book called Future Grace. One of the most pivotal texts to guide me was this text here from 1 Corinthians 15, 9 and 10 because of the remarkable insights that are here concerning the nature of God's grace, not only as they relate to our past, as God worked in Jesus Christ to cover our sins and remove his wrath, but also as God in the future distant and in the future five minutes from now as I'm working on this text, his, his grace is a, is a power that moves into our lives and does things. And so I want to spend maybe two sessions on these few verses and see if you see what I see about the nature of God's grace as we look at the book together. Father, we love your grace. We would be utterly undone, lost, despairing, confused, helpless without your merciful, great, eternal, powerful grace toward us in Christ Jesus. So come and show us the nature of this grace, I pray. I pray through Christ. Amen. For I am the least of the apostles. I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. So one, two, three times the grace of God is referred to in these two verses. And what I'd like to do is in this session talk about what has gone before this term grace and how he relates it backwards and then next time how he relates it to what he says forward. I am the least of the apostles by grace, by the grace of God. I am what I am. So my, my being, the I am the least of the apostles, is by grace. Now that raises a question. Does he just mean uh, I'm an apostle by grace and I happen to be the least of the apostles because I persecuted the church? Or does he really mean I am least by grace? Same thing here. I am the least of the apostles. I am unworthy to be called an apostle by grace. Does he mean I'm an apostle by the grace of God? The grace of God stepped in and made me an apostle, and it stepped in in such time that I am unworthy because in the time before I was persecuting the church of God. Or is there some sense in which the grace of God as a, a powerful moving force entering into my life so that I become, I am what I am, so I become a different person than I was, that that grace itself has been the, the plan and the power of God by which I am not just an apostle, but an unworthy one, not just an apostle, but the least one. That's my question. And on the way to an answer, let me note this. Uh, ordinarily, we think of grace, at least I do, of being uh, the disposition of God to treat us better than we deserve. So it's 
it's not so much an activity with power as it is a state of his heart, a way of his being, a way of his thinking. For example, here in Romans 11, 5, so too at the present time there is a remnant chosen by grace. So grace is the, the disposition of God that inclines him to choose his people who are sinners and don't deserve it. But if it is by grace that we are chosen, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. So it seems like in this whole text here, the meaning of grace is God's way of feeling or way of thinking or way of being that inclines him not to make our efforts the basis of his choice and his justification, but make his own grace sovereignly the basis of our being his. And so ordinarily, I have always thought that's that's the meaning of grace. Grace is is the the, the temper of God, the, the attitude of God, the disposition of God, the inclination of God to treat us better than we deserve. So we can always say with every blessing we received, God's grace is the origin of that. Now here in this text, what is clear is that grace is power that changes things. It's not just a disposition that inclines God a certain way. It is God's active power, active in our lives. And so we're going to see it next time here, and we see it this time here. By the grace of God, I am. I have become a kind of person. And the kind of person is least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle. Which now brings us back to that question. Is is the grace here the plan and purpose of God, the power of God to establish Paul as a least apostle and unworthy apostle, or just as an apostle. Here in Galatians 1, there's a time factor that comes in. When he he who had set me apart, before I was born, and who called me by his grace, called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with any one. So the grace of God called Paul at a certain point in time on the Damascus road and appointed him a, a preacher. But years before that, he had set him apart before he was born. So here's his birth. Here's the Damascus road. Here's, what, 20, 30, 40 years. I don't know how old Paul was when he was converted. And at this point, grace moves in. After grace had appointed him, grace moves in powerfully, actively, and actually changes him. And now, what of this period? If God had chosen him here to be this, he could have done this here. He could have done it here or here. He did it here, and thus he let Paul He let Paul become the kind of sinner that he was so that what? So that what? Why would he do that? One more text. 1 Timothy 1, 13 to 16. Formerly when I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent opponent, but I received mercy I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief and the grace, mercy and grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith. So grace brought him to faith and grace brought him to be a loving person, overflow with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This kind of sinner and this kind of sinner and this kind of sinner of whom I am foremost, but I received mercy for this reason that in me... Now, this reason here is future. It's it's a purpose. It's this, this happened on the Damascus Road for a future purpose. I received mercy so that in me as the foremost... 
Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example of that patience to all who were to believe. Which means that as you sit with a friend, an unbelieving friend who says, I've done too many things, I cannot ever be saved because I am so contaminated, so broken, so dirty. You have no idea what I have done in my life. I am so different from you Christians. I could never, ever be accepted by a holy God. This right here is in the Bible for that person And it's in the Bible because Paul was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent. So that, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience. This is the reason. This is the reason that these things were allowed to happen. That this grace here did not step in sooner. So that Paul would be this and this and this. So that. In me, as the foremost, the foremost blasphemer, Christ might display his perfect patience as an example for this person sitting across from you at, at the pizza store saying he cannot be a believer. And you go to this text and say, look, let me show you. The grace of God has drawn Paul out of blaspheming, out of persecuting, out of insolence, indeed out of murder and torture of Christians and has made him an apostle so that he might be an example for you sitting here today to know that there's a perfect patience with God. So when I come back here to chapter 15, verse 10 of 1 Corinthians, and I see, but by, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, grace of it. I am what I am, and I see it. Un- I am unworthy. I am the least. I say, no, the grace of God did not make him least. It did not make him unworthy. It didn't step in and make him kill people. But the grace of God between the time of its calling in the womb to the time of its calling on the Damascus Road in God's wisdom allowed Paul to become that kind of person so that he would be useful in God's kingdom in a way that he wouldn't otherwise be. And so this grace is a power and a wisdom and a plan and a purpose of God that makes us what we are. You, you may feel like you are a certain kind of person that can't be used of God because of your past. This text and that other one in 1 Timothy 1, 13 to 16 is in the Bible to say, that's not true. God's grace is power.